You guys smashed it with the support on part one, so we're doing a part two as we look at the most overpowered players in Football Manager. Hello everybody, Jake here for FM Scout, and as mentioned, this is part two to the videos where we take a look at the most overpowered players in Football Manager. As mentioned in the last one, we're not going to use your Haaland's, your Mbappe's or anything like that. We're looking for players that fly a bit under the radar, still can be bought for fairly cheap and have a few years left in them, that meet our criteria of having great hidden mental attributes. Our filters for this video were players with high consistency and important matches whilst also having low injury proneness and a high level of professionalism, giving you the guys that should perform as well as possible in the in-game engine. If you don't know why these things affect how the players play, watch episode one, I explain it there. But for now, we've got 11 overpowered players for you guys to take a look at in FM23. And of course, we start off with the goalkeeping position where we take a look at Colombian stopper Alvaro Montero, who plays for Millonarios as an important player in the Colombian divisions. Now, this goalkeeper is six foot five, a fairly professional personality with some very good goalkeeping attributes. His first touch and passing aren't great, but everything else is at a very good level. Really good physical attributes as well. And just for one player, I'll show you what I mean by the hidden attributes. So what you can't see in game, you can only see with the in-game editor or a certain few attributes that you can find here by going edit player attribute details you see a bunch of them but some of the most important are consistency important matches which are a 15 and a 14 for this player which is considered high he also has a professionalism of 15 and an injury proneness of only five and he in game can be very overpowered as all of these guys can be available for only around one million pounds this guy is great value and someone that can hold that goalkeeping position for years to come moving on to player number two and don't forget if you do get any use out of this video or you just want to be nice smash the like button for us and subscribe if you haven't already as we push for 150,000 subscribers we're very close now daily football manager content no reason not to subscribe but player number two is Alphonse Sampstead a player playing for Bodo Glimt out in the Norwegian divisions who has been at the club for a few years now. Now he is available for a super cheap fee of only 300, 200,000 pounds. That's because his contract is expiring very early on in your saves. But this fullback on the right hand side, it, look, he's not going to blow anyone's socks off. He's not going to play for Real Madrid, but he's got everything he needs to be very, very strong in game. Some nice physical attributes, very good work, great teamwork, decent crosser, decent passer, and he can defend okay as well. Yes, he needs some work in the defensive phase, but you're not buying a player for the top tier side in the world here this guy will do the job though at a pretty high level and is definitely worth the valuation shown here with a 15 rating for consistency as well Sampstead is going to always do his best for you on that right hand side left back is a player that featured on our overpowered players on fm22 video he's here on fm23 he's still just as good it's Javi Galen one of the more expensive options in this list and often goes to some of the biggest sides in the world in my saves 27 years of age in his prime playing for Celta V go in the Spanish divisions. Javi is phenomenal. I mean, his physical attributes are already great. Great work, great passing. His crossing and dribbling are exceptional. Then add on top of that some very, very good consistency and important matches. This guy for me is one of my favorite, if not my favorite left back in Football Manager over the last few years. Always consistent, always works hard and never lets you down. Javi Galen is a great player and actually 15 million pounds or so is a bargain for the player you're getting here. Moving into the centre back spots and just one thing as well don't judge a star rating too much in this video that's compared to players at the club that I'm managing here which is Manchester City so he's being compared to Haaland and De Bruyne so let some of these guys off but Amos Pieper of Werder Bremen a German 24 year old centre back who's six foot four with a fairly professional personality could be a great choice for you physically he's extremely dominant he's good in the air he's strong but he has a nice turn of pace too he's not lacking too much there he can head the ball he can mark he can distribute fairly well with okay passing technique and vision and his mentals are at a very nice level for a guy who only cost you a couple million pounds unlikely to pick up too many injuries very good in big games and also super consistent he is a great choice 
at centre back. And before we finish off our defenders, I'd just like to take a second to let you guys know I do have my own channel linked in the description where we have a Leicester save going on at the minute. If you want to come check that out alongside some other rebuild videos that we do, I greatly appreciate it. It would really mean a lot. But anyway, I'll get back to the next player. And it's a man that has been in football manager players' minds for the last few years, but has slowly started to fade away. And it's Anel Ahmed Hozic, who used to be one of the best Wunderkid centre backs you could get back when he was playing at Malmo a few years ago. He's now made his way out to Sheffield United after going through Bordeaux and even though he's recently joined there he's definitely worth keeping an eye on because if Sheffield don't come up you might be able to take him off of their hands he's a player with great attributes but also very very high potential still it's in the 160 range I believe so he still can become that player that we all thought he could be. As with every player in this list the Bosnian is extremely consistent and very good when it comes to those important matches so sign him up if you haven't already a great ball playing centre back who I think even in real life might still go further than Sheffield. If you're looking for cheap bargains who play well, then look no further than Bodo Glimp because they have another great player here and it is Patrick Berg, a defensive midfielder who's 24 years of age and is a model citizen personality, which is the best you can get. He'd be a great player to have around your side. And he's also pretty good at football on the pitch as well. Great work rate, positioning and teamwork, very determined and naturally fit. Not lacking too much in the physical area, but a very nice passer of the ball with vision who can also tackle well and hold his position and mark. So he's a great linchpin at the base of that midfield and one that I think for seven or eight million pounds would be a great pickup, could play for years to come, even at some of the highest levels in world football. A slightly cheaper option than Patrick Berg will be a few years older though. It's Lucas Toro, a resolute central midfielder who plays for Osasuna in the first division out in Spain. Now this Spanish central midfielder is nicely well-rounded physically again. He does lack a little bit in the pace department, but he really does make this up by the fact that he's very good at tackling, good in the air, great positioning and teamwork determined, who makes good decisions and concentrates well. He can also play a pass if needed. His vision lets him down a little bit, but because of how consistent he is, he'll continue to perform in the in-game engine for you. Five million pounds or so certainly would not be a bad deal for this gem. And finishing off our midfield three, it's kind of forgotten man Gedson Fernandez, who has just joined Besiktas. So again, you are going to have to wait for him to settle down in Turkey. Maybe your season or so in, check out how he's doing and he might be worth signing, especially if his transfer valuation holds out at this £10 million value. The guy can play many a role in midfield and despite his poor performances when he came to Tottenham on loan or at least lack of opportunity, Gedson is still a great player with some phenomenal physical attributes, stamina and natural fitness of the highest level, great work rate. This guy is a workhorse in the midfield, but he backs it up with bags of technical ability and mental ability as well. He's not lacking in any real area, good across all aspects of the pitch and a great midfielder for how cheap you can get him for. And for our final three picks, our attackers, I've decided to go a little bit out there and look at players I really don't think you would have tried to have signed before. I can almost guarantee you wouldn't have signed these players. Maybe one you might have done, but this guy... Duvan Vergara is a phenomenal pickup. He's a Colombian playing for CF Monterrey in the Mexican divisions. And I'm surprised he's never came across my radar before because he's got bags of technical ability, a regular starter for his club and good across all areas. He joined them for 1.8 million pounds, but now he's in Raya 2. Now I'm not too sure what this is, but I think it might be the backup team potentially for CF Monterrey because it doesn't say that he's on loan or anything here, but it might just be me missing something. Let me know if anyone does know, but I still think he is worth looking at and worth potentially picking up for only a few million pounds. You get a wide midfielder who doesn't have too much interest in him just yet and could play at a very high level. If you're looking for someone who is slightly younger and has a higher chance of actually being within your database in your save, then you've got Alessio Zerbin, an Italian international with one cap who plays for Napoli. Now, he isn't going to get much game time with Kavica Kavar at Shaquille in front of him. However, he's good physically, good technically and good mentally. Nothing to stand out, but at 23, he's got a lot of time left to grow and he comes at a very cheap valuation of a couple million pounds. Now, he's been at Napoli for a number of years, has gone on a variety of loans, but he hasn't really became a mainstay in the Napoli first team, at least in a football manager sense. But despite this, he is very strong in the hidden attribute department. You can see here, 14 for consistency, 16 for important matches, only four injury proneness and a professionalism rating of 14. This guy has got a lot of potential in the bag. He's also very good right from the off. And I think a great signing for how cheap you can pick him up and he'll perform well for you in the in-match engine. 
But we finish off with our final player, our striker, and that is Ryan Mami. Now, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but this Moroccan 24-year-old striker would be a phenomenal pickup for about £1 million. And I really do mean it because he's got everything you'd want from a striker, particularly if we're looking at advanced forward here. He's very good at dribbling, great at finishing, great first touch, great technique, good work rate, passing abilities there. He can head the ball. He's quick and strong. He's composed. He can make a good decision. He's not going to start up front ahead of Erling Haaland or anything like that. But a high level championship striker, maybe even low level Premier League at first, Ryan Mami would be a great pick and he still has some potential to grow. 11 appearances for Morocco. He now plays for Ferenc Veros out in the Hungarian divisions and looks like he's been doing very well for them with 13 goals in 21 appearances last season. Now though, get him scoring for your side. Try and buy him if you can and I don't think you'll regret it. He'll be very good in the in-match engine according to his hidden attributes. And if you play this whole team in the right tactical setup, they would do a great job for you. So make sure you check some of these guys out. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video. Let us know if you want to see a part three. I love making these ones because we really do hone in on those gems that I think a lot of you won't know. Don't forget to like the video if you did enjoy, subscribe for more, but most of all, have a great day everybody and I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.